The Taliban has captured key strongholds in one of Afghanistan's largest cities. This is being seen as a major victory for the insurgent group in its offensive against government forces. This video provided to journalists by the Taliban purportedly shows a captured government building in the northeastern Afghan city of Kunduz. More than a quarter of a million people live there and there are fears it could fall to the Taliban entirely. Since U.S.-led foreign troops began leaving Afghanistan earlier this year, fighting between the Taliban and Afghan forces has escalated significantly. With more on that, we're joined now by freelance reporter Bilal Sarwari. He is in Kabul. Thank you for your time today. Can you walk us through what happened in the seizure of Kunduz earlier today? Well, we saw the fall of Kunduz city with the Taliban basically taking over most of the government buildings, uh, including the governor's office. Then we saw uh, special forces uh, fighting against the Taliban in some parts of the city. Then we saw the fall of Talukan city, the capital of Takhar province next door, uh, and uh, the fall of Saripul uh, province as well in northern Afghanistan. So the spillover impact of these provinces now means that Mazari Sharif, the biggest uh, city in northern Afghanistan on the border with Uzbekistan, also a major uh, trading hub, is under a massive threat. Uh, it, it has to be said that these cities were surrounded for quite some time by the Taliban. In the last month or so, most of the districts did fall without much of a fight. Uh, you know, the, the, there were mass surrenders of Afghan national security forces mediated by tribal and village elders. Uh, so to me, it looks like the Taliban have hit the panic button, sending a message to the Afghan government and saying, I'm going to attack 10 or 12 of your major provincial capitals. Which one can you defend? because the practicality of the, uh, you know, reinforcements and air support, uh, it cannot just be provided to everywhere and anywhere. We also have confirmation from Afghan officials that the Americans carried airstrikes against the Taliban in the city of Taliban. These are provinces which were home to Northern Lions leaders and commanders, both pre-9-11 and after the Taliban were toppled by the Americans. So the fact that the Americans are carrying airstrikes in, inside major provincial capitals is what they did in 2001. And it alone tells you how much the situation has changed. In terms of timing, this is happening just weeks before the U.S. is set to completely withdraw forces from the country. Is it possible that those plans will change in light of what is now happening in Afghanistan? Well, we saw a clear increase in Taliban attacks, uh, large-scale attacks against major provincial capitals when the Americans announced that they were leaving militarily. So the sharp increase in airstrikes for the time being, uh, could it be, uh, you know, uh, just a U-turn for the time being until the Americans leave, or could that support be extended to the Afghan forces uh, for a long term? We're not sure. But what is clear that Americans are leaving Afghanistan, uh, you know, extremely vulnerable in the absence of a peace process, a credible one, in the absence of a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire. When the Americans started talking to the Taliban in Doha, it is that that they promised the Afghan government, that there would be meaningful peace talks, that, uh, you know, if you release 6,000 Taliban leaders and commanders, uh, it will lead to a, a comprehensive a permanent ceasefire. That has not happened. We're also seeing destruction of public property, uh, you know, both in terms of fighting as well as airstrikes. In a place like Kunduz, farmers should have been harvesting melons and watermelons, and businessmen who have invested millions of dollars lost everything. So from a farmer to a businessman to an ordinary Afghan, everyone is suffering. And according to Afghanistan's Independent Human Rights Commission, close to a million Afghans have been forced to leave their homes now, they are living in the open, they need shelter, they need food. This is still, uh, you know, amidst the corona pandemic. And for Afghans, uh, for ordinary Afghans, the, the suffering is, is unbearable. We, ha we were speaking to people in Kunduz city, including doctors. They said more than 100 civilians have been killed with a lot of the dead bodies on the streets and inside homes. So you can imagine uh, the type of pain and suffering that uh, this new wave of Taliban attacks against major provincial capital is inflicting on, on Afghanistan. 
That is freelance reporter Bilal Sarwari. He joined us from Kabul.